Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Let's plant this beautiful nine bark that I have behind me. It is the Lady in Red nine bark. And the specs on it is hardy in zones two to nine. And the height and width is four to five feet. So I bought this last spring and it needs to go in the ground. And it's almost July, it's almost the first of July. So here in my zone 6B, it's starting to heat up, although it really hasn't gotten the heat that we're used to. And we've gotten a lot of rain recently. So you can see the overcast skies behind me. That is residue from the wildfires in Canada. We're here in zone 6B in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. And some days it's really overcast because of the because of the wildfire smoke. And so I can't imagine what the folks in Canada are going through. So if you happen to be from that area, I just want to say how sorry I am that you're going through this. So let's go ahead and get this nine bark planted. I'm up here in what I call the production garden and I'll link the video below where we talked about the Brandywine Viburnum right over there. And I explained a little bit about this production garden. It doesn't look like much when I'm looking through the camera there, but anyway, uh, it's, <laughs> it's doing fairly decently in my production garden. The reason why I call it a production garden is because everything up here is used, is to be used for cutting, for, for arrangements, or for Christmas decorations, something like that. So I'm not sure what I'm going to have going on in terms of digging here. This is, or was, uh, St. John's wort. It was uh, pumpkin spice, I think it's called, and I'm right on the edge in zone 6b of uh, St. John's wort being uh, being able to live for me. Right behind it is another St. John's wort that we're going to dig up because it's just struggling. It's not really the best time to dig that up, but I'm going to dig it up anyway and move it and see what it will do. So a couple things we'll be needing today, probably the shovel, um, I will use the Biotone Starter Fertilizer in the planting hole. And then I have two gallons of water here, my kneeling pad, and of course, as always, my DeWalt power drill and my auger. This is the 3 by 12 Guru Auger, that power planter calls it the Guru Auger. I have had comments and questions, why don't I get a longer auger? And I do have a longer auger. But you'll see in a minute, my preferred method is down on one knee to aug the ground because as I joke here, we grow rocks on this farm and they're a real blessing in a lot of ways. I mean, we have rock fences and rock walls all over and I can use them for lining flower beds, but under the ground, just rocks and rocks and rocks coming up. So uh, I feel like with this length of an auger gives me a little bit more control. Although I would say I would like to probably get the four inch in diameter auger and I think it's 28 inches long in length. And so if you're watching Greg from Power Planter, I'd love to have one. My favorite color is purple. Did I just say that on camera? <laughs> I'm kidding, not really. All right, let's go ahead and dig this. Let me move my auger back. Let's go ahead and dig this out. This poor little guy. I was so excited when I when we bought this. Oh, got a pretty good root system going on there. Don't you fall. You can see we're on a good bit of a slope here. Uh, you know, we live in the mountains, so we don't have a lot of flat areas. Oh, wow, I see a major ant colony. Yikes, under there. Yeah, this poor guy. Sorry. Sorry there, little plant. No, oh, those are red ants too. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to take care of those. Hmm. Yikes. I need to make a decision here about these ants and I'll get back with you in a minute. 
So I decided to move up the hill a little bit. Even when I dug up the other St. John's Ward, I was just going to plant this in that spot. Still an ant colony under there, pretty major. So I moved up the hill. I don't see any ant towns in here or anything. And it's a little bit closer than I wanted to be uh, to this beautyberry here, but I don't think the beautyberry is going to grow too. I just I don't think they're going to encroach on each other. Hopefully, and the digging is surprisingly good here. The soil looks fantastic. It's some good native soil. Oh gosh, I love it. I'll bring some closer and show you. Look how rich that looks. Isn't that nice? That's nice soil. So I started off with my shovel and I'm just going to see um, if I need to go a little deeper. Now, you know, I think a landscaping um, auger with the bigger 40 volt drill, this is a 20 volt drill here, but I think it, you know, I think it would do fine here. I'm just concerned about the rocks and I don't want to end up hurting, injuring myself. So I'd rather do the old tortoise and the hare syndrome and be a bit of the tortoise. I'm not worried about, you know, just really doing everything fast. So I kind of use my auger in a mixer form, kind of like a mixer. You can see here there's a rock, but this is nothing compared to what we have mostly, but. I just like doing the kneeling and gives me a little, just feels like it gives me a little more control over the auger and the drill, so. I mean, I could be totally wrong about that, and I probably am, but at 62 years old, I'm kind of protecting everything I have, so. Now, my husband, my husband uses the, the longer uh, auger with this, the one that goes with this 20-volt drill, and, you know, stands up. It's no problem, but... So by using the auger, it just loosens up the soil. That is some beautiful soil. Woo! Love it. I wish all of our soil and ground was like that, but just be thankful for what you get. Another one of the things I like about using the auger is it kind of edges here loosens up the soil for me. All right, let's see if we can get this puppy out of this container. Ah, look at there. It's not too badly root bound. Okay, so I don't have anybody to run the camera for me, so I can show you up close here, but I'm about two inches below the ground level. I want it just even with the ground level, and so I'm going to add some dirt. Now let's see. And we are on a slope here, so I have to account for that uh, when I'm planting it. And of course you want to grab it down as close to you, as you can uh, to the trunk. Don't hold it by up here or anything obvious. That's obvious, right? You know that. Okay, that looks good as far as ground level. And even if it's above, just a hair is fine too. You just don't want it to be below the ground level. Okay, so I like how this looks. 
and I like the depth and everything. Next thing I'm going to do is take it out and I'm going to make sure the water drains down, but I'm sure that's not a problem. Since we're on a nice slope here. So I always like to just pour some water in the hole. I probably poured a half gallon. I want to see how quickly it soaks in. I don't, uh, because the nine bark does not like wet feet. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. I will say the ground is probably really saturated uh, because we've had, I think we had seven inches of rain and we're very thankful for that. We had been in a drought before that. So this is slowly seeping out. So yeah, I think it'll be just fine. It took a good five minutes for this water to drain down, which is a little bit unusual, especially for up here in this area where it's so dry. This ground is dry. It's all broom sedge up there. And uh, this was all broom sedge. So um, I'm not concerned about it. The main thing is that it drains. I don't want it to fill up and not drain. So it, it has drained, it has left some mud, but I really think it's because of the seven inches, maybe even eight inches of rain we have recently had. I think the ground uh, down there at the, where the water table is, is pretty saturated. So that's probably a good thing. It's probably uh, just as long as it drains, just as long as the hole that you dig has drained. That's the important part. Even if it drains a little bit slow, that means your shrub or whatever you're planting is going to, uh, the water's not going to drain away so quickly and that your roots are going to get the water that they need. So I'm going to put in some Biotone starter fertilizer. Now when I'm planting annuals or something like that, I don't use the Biotone starter fer fertilizer because the planting hole is shallow and the critters smell it. It's got quite the smell about it. The critters smell it and they would just dig them up. But for something like this, um, I will go ahead and just use some. And this is the only time that you use the Biotone starter fertilizer uh, when you're actually planting in something because it's only good for root growth and development uh, coming from underneath going up. It's not a topical uh, fertilizer. It's an in-ground slow release fertilizer. So, all right, I think we're ready to get this beauty in the planting hole. Definitely, if there was water still in there, I would not plant in this spot. It would mean it's just too, too, too wet. And you would drown and kill your whatever you're planting. Unless it was a bog, something like a bog plant, like uh, the hardy hibiscus. They, they kind of like the bog, boggy areas, but not the nine barks. I think I'm going to turn it this way just a bit to be kind of even with the slope of the hill. Even though, you know, all of this is going to grow anyway. I like how that's sitting. I usually use my hand as kind of a level so that I can kind of judge and make sure that I have it planted at the right depth. So that looks good. Yep. So now I'm just going to backfill I'm not sure that I'll have enough soil here, but I did bring some compost that I could mix in. But using your native soil is the best, as much as you can. So I just backfill it, and then I tamp it down. Sometimes I take my foot and tamp it down. You want to make sure you get that planting hole completely filled. I have a bag of leaf compost here that I picked up at my local nursery and so I'm going to top dress whoops, with that. It's a little bit wet. 
Actually, I'm going to water again. I'm going to go ahead and water again. All right. So we'll go ahead and top dress it with this compost. And as we said, the native soil to, in your planting hole is the best. But if you have to mix a little compost in it, which I have had to do sometimes, it's okay. Just make sure you have mostly your native soil if possible. I haven't really noticed any deer pressure. I have two other nine barks, so I don't think the deer particularly care about it. And I think it's going to be very happy up here. I'm glad to have it. And I will use the foliage, uh, some of the foliage after the shrub gets bigger. I'll use some of the foliage in cut flower arrangements. So I'm, I'm pleased to be able to put it up here. I'm really happy you were able to join me today. And until next time, friends, happy gardening. Bye-bye.